Hi, this is John. Welcome back to Modern Old School Developer. In this episode, I'll show you how to run the Movie Manager application using Docker. During development, we had to install the right versions of Python and Node and configure our application. We also had to run the front end and back end separately. With Docker, we can package up the correct Python and Node versions with our application and run both components with a single command. Our application will run on any system with Docker installed, no matter their underlying configuration. All right, let's start by adding a Docker file to our backend. We need Python for our backend, so let's base our image on a Python Docker Hub image. We've been using Python 3.8 during development, so let's add a tag of Python 3.8 slim bullseye. This will get us a stripped down version of Debian 11 Linux with Python 3.8. All right, next I'm gonna set up a working directory. It's gonna be slash app, although you can put it wherever you want. I'm gonna copy over requirements.txt to our Docker image. Everything is gonna be relative to our work directory, so dot is the same as slash app here. Next, we can run pip to install our requirements. So let's add the pip command, requirements.txt. I've added no cache dir here so that pip will not cache anything it gets from PyPy. This will give us a smaller Docker image in the end. And we're going to install things globally because again, there's no harm in doing that here. Our Docker image is self-contained. All right, next we can copy movie manager over to dot slash movie manager. Now you need to put uh, the movie manager path in there on the right because it's gonna copy everything inside this folder locally to this path. So if we didn't specify this, we'd put all of our files in our slash app directory. That's not what we want. So make sure you specify the path just like this. Now we can say expose 8000. This will tell Docker desktop that we're using port 8000. It's not strictly necessary, but can be helpful for Docker desktop. The last thing to do is give it a command to actually run our application. We're gonna run it with uvcorn. It's in the movie manager package in the main module and it's the app. Finally, because we're using Docker, I need to bind to the global IP inside the Docker container, not 127001, which we wouldn't be able to reach from our host or anywhere else. All right, I've got one more thing here, dash dash log config, and that's the log config we've been using for Ubicorn. That's gonna be inside dblogging.yaml, and that is it. There is our Docker file. So this will build our image. I wanna add one more thing in here though. I wanna add a dot docker ignore file. Inside Movie Manager, we might, have dot, we might have this pi cache. I don't want that being copied over. It's not needed and we don't want it. We might be running a different version of Python than inside Docker. It's probably fine, but let's just ignore that. So it's similar to Git, although slightly different rules for how you specify things. We're gonna put slash slash underscore pi cache underscore underscore. This will eliminate any pi cache directories anywhere under this folder. So it won't copy anything that's in there. All right, so that is our Docker container for the backend. One quick correction here, the command line for log config should be var db movie manager logging.yaml, not simply db slash logging.yaml. All right, let's go ahead and build a Docker file for our front end. So during development, we used npm start to run our React application, but that's not what you would do in production. In production, you would build the React application and then serve that build folder with an actual web server like Nginx or Apache. So we're gonna do that in our Docker file. We'll start by building the Node application. So let's say from Node, I want 16 bullseye slim. And this time I'm gonna say as builder, because once we're done building the application, we don't need Node or any of the Node dependencies. So we can save space in our image by getting rid of them. So we're gonna use builder as a temporary image 
And then later on, we'll have an Nginx image to serve our finished application. Okay, again, I'm gonna say workdir slash app. Now I want to copy package.json to our app directory. Then we can run npm install. After we're done with that, I'm gonna copy everything in the current directory to our app directory. And finally, I'm gonna run npm run build. This will build our optimized production application. So instead of running npm start, we do npm run build. Now we're gonna get a different application base. So I'm gonna say from nginx stable. And now I'm going to say work directory. We're changing it to user share nginx HTML. This is where the default nginx pages are. So if we put everything in here, it should work out pretty well for us. Now I'm gonna delete everything that's in here right now. I don't want any of the default pages. And then we're gonna copy, and rather than just copy something from our regular system, we're gonna copy from builder. That's our image we use to build the application. And then we're gonna copy slash app slash build into our current directory. Finally, we will expose port 80, and our entry point is going to be engine X. That's not right. There it is, engine X, global flag, and daemon off. Okay, and that will tell it what to run when the container is completed. So, we have built our application, and we've copied it over to our new container, our file container, so we won't have node in there at the end. The application will be a little bit smaller overall. All right, let's go ahead and save that. And then we also need to add a docker ignore file. So let's do that, Dot docker ignore. I don't want it to copy over the node modules. I don't want to copy over the build directory. And I don't want to copy over, actually that's pretty much it. Rest of it should be fine. So that should be good for that. One quick correction, need to make this line five copy package star.json to dot slash. Otherwise, it won't copy the package lock file, which we need for npm. All right, the last thing we need to do is make a docker compose file. So docker-compose.yaml. Start off with a version of this file so it knows which keys it can accept. So version 3.8 is current, I think, or 3.9 maybe. It's fine either way. And then we have all of our services. So one of our services is our front end. We need to know how to build the Docker image. So we put a build key in here, and then the context is dot slash front end. And finally, we need to tell it how to map our ports. So I'm gonna map port 3000 to port 80. So it'll be just like when we ran it with npm start, we'll connect to localhost port 3000, but we'll be going to the Docker container port 80. Remember in our front end, under our Docker file, we exposed port 80 because that's what engine X is running on inside the Docker container. So we're mapping port 3000 on our actual server running Docker to our Docker container in port 80. All right, that's pretty much it for the front end. For the back end, we'll add a build key. The context is gonna be dot slash back end. We're gonna have ports there as well. A bit easier to understand this time. We're gonna map port 8000 locally to port 8000 in the container. All right, that should be good. Now we need to add an environment variable. Now we need to say mm database path because this might change, but actually inside the container, it's gonna be the same thing every time. So we're gonna say it is var database movie manager. That'll be the path inside the Docker container where our movie manager database is stored. This is all of our movie files, um, the logging configuration, the SQLite database, all of those things will be in there. So how do we specify where that path comes from? Well, we're gonna use a volumes. We're gonna map a path on the local system to this path in Docker. So all we have to do is give it an array, and I wanna use an environment variable so we can override this on the command line if we want to. 
So I'm going to say mmdb path, and we'll give it a default value of dot slash backend slash db. So it'll be the backend database path if you don't specify anything else. And then we're mapping it to this path, which is var db movie manager. So this path inside our Docker container matches this path. And we're mapping something on our local host to that. And that is everything for our Docker Compose file. All right, how do we actually run our containers then? Oh, so if we do docker compose space up, this will build our images and launch both of them. Shouldn't take very long, maybe a minute the very first time you do this to run the npm install commands and the pip install commands, but after the first time you build it, it caches those commands and builds your images much faster. All right, you can see the output of our nginx process and our movie manager backend. So let's go see if it's working. If I go to Docker Desktop, which is available in Windows, I can see I've got these containers over here. So here's our front end. I can go open the front end in a browser. Localhost 3000, movie list is blank. It's a blank database. If I go to my terminal over here, you can see I didn't have a database. I've got Toy Story 2 in there. I do have a database now. It just created this. And if I go over to admin and import, we'll import Toy Story 2. And I can rename that Toy Story 2 if I want. There we go. And back to our terminal. We can now see that in movies, we've got Toy Story 2. So yeah, everything does seem to be working out okay. If I want to stop our containers, if I have, uh, if you've got Docker Desktop, which is available on Mac and Windows, you can simply go over here and hit stop. Otherwise, you can hit Control C on your terminal. But if you've used the dash D option to detach things, you won't see it in the terminal. There we go. It's all detached. I can still stop this right over here. Or I can say Docker PS and I can say Docker stop movie manager front end one and back end one. And there we go. Now everything should be stopped. And once again, I can go ahead and say Docker Compose up either with D or without D. Now, if I wanted to stop it from here, I could say Docker Compose down. And there we go. Everything is stopped just like that. One more thing, if I didn't want to use backend DB as database, I could put it somewhere else. So I could make temp and I could say mm database path equals home git movie manager temp and then I could say docker compose up. Now this is going to create one problem here because it's not going to find the logging.yaml file that it needs. So you can see it's going to crash right over here. So I would have to copy the backend db logging.yaml to our temp directory before I'd be able to use that. But otherwise, it should work fine now. And you can see it is working now. And inside temp, we do have a SQLite database. So there we go. That is how I would run this with a different database path for our backend if I didn't want the default one in our Git repository. And that's pretty much what we would do to run our application under Docker. Now, you probably wouldn't use UVCorn in production as an exposed server on the internet. You'd probably want to put that behind Nginx or Apache or Unicorn or something else. But um, for this, it's fine. So I'm going to leave it like it is. All right, so that brings us to the end of today's episode. Hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.